Hey guys, it's me, the Audible Bottable, and <clears throat> today I'm going to read to you, as far as I can get, in uh, The Crying of Lot 49 by Pinch and Thomas, one of the most difficult novels in the English language. Not the most difficult, but one of the most difficult novels in the English language. And that's what's gonna happen. I hope there's nothing racist. It feels like there is. One summer afternoon, Miss Oedipa Moss came home from a Tupperware party whose hostess had put perhaps too much kirsch in the fondue to find that she, Oedipa, had been named executor, or she supposed executrix, of the estate of one Pierce Inverarity, a California real estate mogul who had once lost two million dollars in his spare time, but still had assets numerous and tangled enough to make the job of sorting it all out more than honorary. Oedipa stood in the living room, stared at by the greenish dead eye of the TV tube, spoke the name of God, tried to feel as drunk as possible. But this did not work. She thought of a hotel room in Matsalan whose door had just been slammed, it seemed forever, waking up 200 birds down in the lobby. A sunrise over the library slope at Cornell University that nobody out on it had seen because the slope faces west. A dry, disconsolate tune from the fourth movement of the Bartok Concerto for Rector Orchestra. A whitewashed bust of Jay Gold that Pierce kept over the bed on a shelf so narrow for it she'd always had the hovering fear it would someday topple on them. Was that how he died, she wondered, among dreams crushed by the only icon in the house? That made her laugh out loud and helpless. You're so sick, Oedipa, she told herself, or the room, which she knew. That was a paragraph. The letter was from the law firm of Warp, Wistful, Kubitschek, and McMingus of Los Angeles, and signed by someone named Metzger. It said Pierce had died back in the spring and they'd only just now found the will. Metzger was to act as co-executor and special counsel in the event of any involved litigation. Oedipa had been named also to execute the will in a codicil dated a year ago. She tried to think back to whether anything unusual had happened around then. Though through through, <laughs> through the rest of the afternoon, through the rest of the afternoon, Afternoon. Through her trip to the market in the downtown Kinneret among the pines to buy ricotta and listen to the music, today she came through the bead curtained entrance for Brown Bar 4 of the Four Wayne Sigtenko Ensembles Verorium recording of the Vivaldi Casu Concerto Boyd Beaver soloist, then through the sun gathering of her marjoram and sweet basil from the herb garden, reading of book reviews in the latest Scientific American, until the lawyering, layering of a lasagna, garlicking of a bread, tearing up a romaine leaves, eventually of and on, into the mixing of the twilight's whiskey sours against the arrival of her husband Wendell, Mucho Moss, from work, she wondered, wondered, shuffling back through a fat deck full of days which seemed, wouldn't she be the first to admit it more or less identical, or all pointing the same way suddenly like a conjurer's deck? any odd one reticly clear to a trained eye. It took her till the middle of Huntley and Brinkley to remember that last year at three or so in the morning there had been this there had come this long distance call from where she would never know unless he now he left a diary. By a voice beginning in a heavy Slavic tone as second secretary at the Transylvania consulate, looking for an estate escaped bat, modulated to comic negro, then on to hostile Pachuco dialect, full of chingas and miracones. Then a Gestapo officer asking her in shrieks did she have relatives in Germany, and finally his Lamont Cranston voice, the one he talked in all the way down to Maz Mazatlan. Pierce, please, she managed to get in. I thought we had, but Margot, earnestly. I've just come from Commissioner Weston, and that old man in the funhouse was murdered by the same blowgun that killed Professor Quackenbush or something. <laughs> For God's sake, she said. Yeah, I know. Mucho had rolled over and was looking at her. Why don't you hang up on him, Mucho suggested sensibly. I heard that, Pierce said. I think it's time Wendell Moss had a little visit from the shadow. Silence, positive and thorough, fell. So it was the last of his voices she ever heard, Lamont Cranston. That phone line could have been pointed any direction, been any length. Its quiet ambiguity shifted over in the months after the call to what had been revived. Memories of his face, body, things he'd given her. Things she now and then pretended to have not to have heard him say it took him over and the verge and to the verge of being forgotten the shadow waited a year before visiting but now there was metzger's letter had pierce called the uh, called last year to then to tell her about this codicil, or had he decided on it later somehow because of her annoyance and Mucho's indifference? She felt exposed, finessed, put down. She had never executed a will in her life, didn't know where to begin, didn't know how to tell the law firm in L.A. that she didn't know where to begin. Mucho, baby, she cried in an access of helplessness. <coughs> Mucho Mas, home, bounced through the screen door. Today was another defeat, he began. Let me tell you, she also began, but let Mucho go first. He was a disc jockey who worked further along the peninsula and suffered regular crises of conscience out his profess. Shouldn't. This entire part is cut off here. I don't know why. I don't believe in any of it. Ud. But he... 
I have to shift in my chair. Give me a second. I have to scratch my butt. I don't believe in any of it, Ed. He usually could usually get out. I try, I truly can't, way down there, further down perhaps than she could reach, so that such times also brought her near panic. It uh, might have been the sight of her so about to lose control that seemed to bring him back up. You're too sensitive. Yeah, there was so much else she ought to be saying so also, but this is what came out. It was true, anyway. For a couple years, he'd been a used car salesman and so hyper-aware of what that profession had come to mean that working hours were exquisite torture to him. Mucho sa shaved his upper lip every morning three times with, three times against the grain to remove any remotest breadth of a mustache. New blades, he drew blood invariably, but kept at it. Bought all natural shoulder suits and then went to a tailor to have the labels made yet more abnormally narrow on his hair used only water, combing it like Jack Lemon to throw him further off. The sight of sawdust, even pencil shavings, made him wince, his own kind being known to use it for hushing sick transmissions, and though he dieted, he still could not see as Oedipa did use honey to sweeten his coffee for use for like all things viscous as it distressed him, recalling too poignantly what is often mixed with motor oil to ooze dishonest into gasps gaps between piston and cylinder wall. He walked out of a party one night because someone used the word cream puff. It seemed maliciously in his hearing. The man was a refugee Hungarian pastry cook talking shop, but there was your mucho thin skinned. There was your mucho thin skinned. Jesus Christ. This is what you need to read in a college English class. Probably. I would. This is freaking great. Like, wow. I love it. Yet at least he had believed in the cars. Maybe to excess. How could he not, seeing people poorer than him come in? Negro, Mexican, cracker. <laughs> I don't know what when this was written. Br parade seven days a week, bringing the most god-awful of trade-ins. Motorized and metal extensions of themselves, of their families, and what else their whole lives must be like. Out there so naked for anybody, a stranger like himself to look at. Framed, cockeyed, rusty underneath, fender repainted in a shade just off enough to depress the value, if not mucho himself. Inside, smelling hopelessly of children's supermarket booze, two, sometimes three generations of cigarette smokers, or only of dust. And when the cards were swept out, you had to look at the actual residue of these lives, and there was no way of telling what things had been truly refused when so little he supposed came by that out of fear, most of it had to be taken and kept, and what had simply perhaps tragically been lost. Clipped coupons promising savings of five or ten cents, trading stamps, pink flyers advertising specials at the markets, butts, tooth shy combs, help wanted ads, yellow pages torn from the phone book, rags of old underwear or dresses that were already period costume for wiping your own breath off the inside of a windshield with so you could see whatever it was, a movie, a woman or a car you coveted, a cop who might pull you over just for drill, all the bits and pieces coated uniformly like a salad of despair, in a gray dressing of ash, condensed exhaust, dust body wastes. It made him sick to look, but he had to look. If it had been an outright junkyard, probably he would have stuck things out and made a career. The violence that had caused each wreck being infrequent enough far away from him to be miraculous, as each death up till the moment of our own is miraculous. But the endless rituals of trade in week after week never got as far as violence or blood, and so were too pro plausible for the impressionable Mucho to take for long. Even if enough exposure to the unvarying gray sickness had somehow managed to immunize him, he could still never accept the way each owner, each shadow, fil filed in only to exchange a dented, malfunctioning version of himself for another, just as futureless, automated projection of somebody else's life, as if it were the most natural thing. To Mucho, it was horrible. Endless, convoluted incest. So, um, that's gonna be that for today. I might come back and read this later because I am having the best time. This was probably boring to listen to unless you like English like I do. But, the, mwah, like, wow. It's just so dense. It's the densest book. I love dense books. Except Dune. Dune can die in a hole. So until next time, it's everybody. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba -da. I'm gonna go work on a railroad and suck a man. Bye. Have you been to Wonderland?